you might just take your Bibles in hand this morning and turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25, and we'll actually be looking at a couple other passages along this morning, and, but I'll give those passages to you when we come to those in the sermon. But for now, let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had, given, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, She was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to set her away secretly. And when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is, the Holy, is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. May the Lord bless you in his word. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these words that remind us and prepare us for the season, the season where we remember your birth, Lord Jesus, which again points us to why you came to this world, to provide a way to be saved from our sins. So Lord Jesus, thank you for these words. We ask now, Lord God, that you open our ears to hear from you, open our eyes to see you, and give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. John Patton was a missionary in the Hybrids Islands, or Hybrid, Hebrides, I don't know how you see that, (laughs) some kind of island out there. One night, hostile natives surrounded the mission station, intended to burning out the patrons and killing them. Patton and his wife prayed during the terror-filled night that God would deliver them. When daylight came, they were amazed to see their attackers had left. A year later, the chief of the tribe was converted to Christ. Remembering what happened, Patton asked him what kept him from burning down his house and killing them. The chief was surprised and asked, who were all those men with you there? Patton knew that there were no one present, but the chief said he was afraid to attack because he had seen hundreds of big men in shining garments with swords drawn, circling the mission statement. Or mission station. Pretty incredible story, isn't it? What were these big men in shining gowns with swords drawn? Well, we can assume that they were angels. There's many stories like this around the world where God protected his people. I remember another story of a camp director 
I don't know which camp this was, but I remember hearing the story of a camp director. It was his practice to go walk around the camp every night to pray over the campers, especially those campers who weren't Christians, that they would come to faith in Jesus Christ. Well, there's some campers there that didn't like the camp director. And they knew the camp director's pattern of going every night to pray around the camp. So one night they decided to hide in the bushes and wait for him to come along and then they would jump him and beat him. Well, that evening, the camp director did what he normally did and walked around the camp. And the boys saw their opportunity but didn't jump him. The next morning, the boys actually felt somewhat guilty of what their intentions were and came up to the camp director and said, you know, we need to apologize because last night we intended to jump you and to beat you. By the way, who were those two really big buff guys walking side beside you? The camp director said, no, I was walking alone last night. No one was with me. No, director, we, we did see two really big men walking alongside of you. They were angels, again, protecting the camp director. There's other stories like those two I've just shared. But it reminds us that there are such things as angels. We may not see them. We may not understand angels. But God created them, like he created us, for a specific purpose. And God created those angels as protectors of us as Christians, but also oftentimes to bring a message. And that's what we're going to look at this morning about these angels. And also look and learn how we can apply what we learn about these angels to our lives today. This morning we're looking at three different passages because it all speaks to the angels and their message they had for Mary, Joseph, and a group of shepherds. So if you have your Bibles, turn again to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. In this story, this recording of Matthew chapter 1, it's a story of when Joseph is really weighing what to do. He had found out that Mary was pregnant and, and he was betrothed to Mary, so they weren't actually quite married yet because betrothal meant was, was a time of period of preparation. So there was a commitment between Joseph and Joseph uh, and Mary's dad that Mary would be married to Joseph. And so for about a year's time, Joseph would have to prepare his house to get married to get the house ready, to make sure he had his career going in a way, um, but to be ready for his wife so he can pr provide for his wife. Something we could do well in a character culture too, right? <laughs> but then in this time period, Joseph knew that Mary had become pregnant. And so he was figuring out what to do. Should I divorce her quietly? He didn't want any harm to come to her because Jewish law was if someone was had sexual relations outside of marriage, they were to be stoned. Kind of a scary thing, isn't it? So Joseph didn't want her to be shamed or for that to happen to Mary, and so he was trying to figure out, how could I divorce her quietly? But the angel of the Lord came to Joseph in this one night to tell him, no, do you plan to bury Mary? Marry her still. Because this child who is within you is conceived of the Holy Spirit. She's pure still. So don't worry about it. Marry her. Then in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, we see other, another story too that we'll read shortly. It's a story of, of an angel visiting Mary. And an angel comes to Mary and, and tells her that you're going to be with the child. So obviously this takes place before the angel meets with Joseph, right? The angel comes to Mary and says, you're going to be pregnant you can conceive of the Holy Spirit, and the Son you have will save his people from their sins. It's believed that this angel is the angel Gabriel to give this message. So what do we learn about these angels? Well, there's two things. First, the angels were to proclaim a message. In both Matthew 1, 18 to 25, and when I mentioned this a moment ago in Luke, which again we'll look at in a moment, the angels come to give a message. A message that's very important because it's announcing 
the birth of Jesus that was to come. So again, in Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 25, the angel appears before Joseph. Well, we say with words, it's important to understand what they mean. Helps us understand sometimes rules. Have you ever looked at your name, what your name means? Yeah, some of you have. Some of you don't know what your mean, name means. Well, often what our name means often defines a little bit of who we are, right? Or hopefully we, hopefully the, our name has a good meaning, right? <laughs> and hopefully we live by it. We, we see people in the Old Testament, there's people's names, that, well, often their names was given with, with what it means. And uh, there's three men in the book of Na Daniel named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, the names they had before were Jewish names, were, had really good na names that had means of honoring God. But when they had been given new names in Babylon, they were given names that were pretty demeaning and not good names. I don't remember what they mean right now, so I won't say what they are right now. But I encourage you sometime, look up the, the those names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You'll see what I mean then. So what does the word angel mean then? Well, the Greek word here in this passage and in the following passages we'll look at this morning is a Greek word, angelos. Pretty close to the English word angel, isn't it? Angelos. And it means a messenger or specifically a transient power who carries out various missions or tasks. A messenger. So angels, they carry out specific tasks that God gives them, specifically that of being messengers. And the angels were coming to give the message to Mary and Joseph that they would bear a son. And they were to name his name Jesus. Do you know what the name Jesus means? The Greek word for Jesus here actually is, is the word Jesus. That's the Greek word for, for Jesus. And actually means Joshua. Interesting, eh? So Jesus is, is actually related to the name Joshua. Remember the, Joshua in the Old Testament? He's a man who feared God. In fact, some would say that Joshua was actually a better leader than Moses yet. And uh, Moses was a significant leader for Israel. But it also means... Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, the full Hebrew name for Jesus is actually a sentence of two words. And it is a sentence, Yahweh saves. Interesting, isn't it? Jesus, his name, means to save, that God saves. Turn with me now to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And here's the story of the angel talking to Mary. Now in the sixth month of the now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at the statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? And the an angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and for that reason the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. 
And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has, been, has con also conceived a son in her old age. And she who is called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. We hear in this story again that the angel came to Mary to give a message that she would bear the Son of God, the Messiah. So obviously, Gabriel had a very important message to give and was obedient to God to give that message. So the messages from, our, from angels are twofold. They were to relay a message, as we've seen in these two passages this morning, messages to Mary and Joseph and to the shepherds, as we'll see in a moment. But their message wasn't just to tell them something's about to happen. It was also for this purpose, a call to action. A call to action. So the angels gave this message to Mary and Joseph, but it was a call of action for Joseph, again, to marry Mary still. And for Mary to prepare herself to be the mother of Jesus. We too, as Christians, are called to proclaim a message. What message is that? It's the message of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ, what he has done for us, what he did at the cross to save us from our sins. And even as we give that message too, we need to give people the call, a call to action to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. So may we be like angels in this way, to bear the message that God has given us, the message, the message of salvation. Well, there's a second thing we learn about angels, and that is this. Angels bring glory to God. Angels bring glory to God. Turn now with me to Luke chapter 2. One chapter over from what we've just read. In Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14, we read these words. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were ter terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as they lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. We see in this passage now how, again, yes, an angel comes and gives a message to the shepherds, but what else happens? All of a sudden, there's a multitude of angels who are there and the scripture says that they praised God. And they praised God with these words again. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. 
You know, it's very important. As we read these words that the angels spoke in praise and glory to God, we often have heard those first two lines, of, haven't we? Glory to God in the highest and peace among men. Well, the important part that's often missed is the following phrase, with whom he is pleased. With whom he is pleased. So peace among men in whom God is pleased. Again, this whole thing points back to God. The message that the angel gave to the shepherds pleased the Lord and was to glorify the Lord because it, again, brought the shepherds to the point to act and to see what they had heard about. To go and see the Christ child, the Son of God who was born to take our sins away. So it brought glory to God. The angels spoke praise to God. And it also encouraged the shepherds to act upon that. The Greek word here for praising that, that, that is mentioned here of the, shep, of the angels saying praise to God is the Greek word enia, sorry, enio, which means this. Simply again, just to praise. But the theological dictionary of the New Testament goes a little bit further to help us understand a little bit more clearly because it's kind of hard to define the word with the same word, right? <laughs> that doesn't help us really understand. So the dictionary says this. This word of the two main senses, to praise and to tell, the former alone is important. So again, to praise. The eight instances in the New Testament referred of joyful praise of God in him or prayer by individuals, a group, the community, or angels. So the whole point of praise is to bring glory to God. It may be in song like a hymn or maybe in word not put to song. We often think of praise as singing, don't we? Some people have labeled praise as, as more of those exuberant, joyful, exciting, high-octane worship songs, right? Or hymns. But praising isn't just song. It's also saying words of praise and oration to God. It is thought that angels sing. But actually, did you know that in Scripture it doesn't say anything about the angels singing? Every reference to angels is always of them speaking glory to God. It doesn't actually mention singing. Now, that doesn't mean that angels don't sing. Because we can't make that deduction based on Scripture. It's silent on whether the angels do sing or not. But we do know that they bring glory to God. And likewise, we're to bring glory to God. This evening, if you join us, we have a, a chance and opportunity to sing praises in the greater body of Christ together. So may we do exactly that this evening. Sing these songs of praise and these prayers to give thanksgiving and adoration and supplication and confession to the Lord. Let's go further a little bit of what praise is. To praise is actually to speak good of someone. Or to speak good of something. That's what the angels did when they brought this message to the shepherds. They spoke of good points of God, glory to God in, in the highest. We must do likewise. Yesterday, we were having a worship practice for the team for tonight. And uh, there's one song we're singing together called Lord Have Mercy. And I'd said after we had sung that song, my friend Pastor Chris is the one who's singing the third verse. And I said, after we're done singing that song, I said, you know, I could listen to that third verse all day long because I love the sound of Pastor Chris's voice. That's what I was doing in that moment. I was giving praise to Pastor Chris, specifically about his singing voice and how he's singing. That's kind of the kind of picture and idea of what we're supposed to do, what the angels were doing in regards to God, speaking or singing words that bring honor to God. 
This evening, too, there'll be a time that we'll be able to say prayers out loud from the congregation, words of adoration to God. Even that, even when we're not singing, speaking words of adoration to God. Because God is worthy of all praise, of all adoration. So the angels praise God by two words that we see here. Now, we don't necessarily, again, know necessarily by song, but, but based on the definition, hymns, words of adoration to God. And exactly that too. The angels praise God by words. We see this again all in verse 13. And suddenly there was a... Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. The angels spoke words, or maybe they sang the words, of adoration to God, to bring glory to him. Likewise, us as Christians, we're to bring glory to God in our words, in our songs. That doesn't mean we can't sing fun songs that have little or no meaning. Sure we can. Does that mean we can't sing love songs to our spouse? No, it doesn't mean that at all. This is the songs we sing bring glory to God. That our words that we speak bring glory to God. Including how we speak about each other and to each other. How we speak of those who are not a part of us as a church too. Speaking words of kindness. Words that uplift and don't tear down. So may we as Christians be like the angels Bringing praise to God, may we bring praise to God in direct words to Him, but also in how we treat others. The angels give us a good picture, a great reminder for how we as Christians are to act. That God has sent us to, to send a message, the message of salvation. And that we're to speak words of kindness and goodness too. To bring glory to God. Samuel Taylor Coleridge once said this. If man is not rising upwards to be an angel, depend upon it. He is sinking downwards to be a devil. <laughs> Interesting words, isn't it? Right? Not that we become angels, because when we die, we don't become angels. That's wrong theology. People say that all the time, that, oh, that person has died and has become one of God's angels. No, they haven't, be, they haven't become an angel. They're still a human, but they are in the presence of the Lord then. But we're to aspire like the angels, to be like the angels to be messengers of God and to bring glory to Him. Here's two points of action. I've mentioned these already this morning, but the first again is this, is to proclaim the gospel, gospel message to the world. God has given us an important message, and so we must share it with those who are lost. Whether it be a family member or a friend or a neighbor, a co-worker or a peer, or even a stranger that God puts in our path. We must proclaim the good news of the gospel. And the second point of action is to speak and sing glory to God. Because God is worthy of all praise. God created you for a great purpose. And that is to bring his important message to those who put us in our path. And he equips us to do it. We don't have to rely on our own strength, but God gives us the strength and the ability to share his good news. You may be the closest thing to an angel that anyone sees. So be sure to point to God's glory as people look at you. Let's pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you are a good God. And we thank you of this Christmas story. The message that you sent your angels to proclaim to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. That again, a message of your coming. That again points to you and your glory, God. Lord God, may we be bearers of your good news. When people see us, may they see Christ. May they see you. Lord, no matter what we face, even in good times and bad times, Lord, we know you have given us emotions and there's good and tough times. But even through those tough times and the good times, may we reflect your glory. God, you're good. And we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you again that we don't have to be messengers on our own strength, but you give us the ability to do it. You give us the very words to speak. And Lord, all that we do and say may bring glory to you. May we bring glory to you in our relationships, in our marriages, in our relationship with our parents, with our children, in our relationships with those we work with, our friendships. And Lord, in our moments with you, may we bring glory to you in your name too. God, you are good. And we give you praise and glory. Amen.